Good morning, this is 4046. Hopefully, wherever you are, you're having a good day. Today is a day off, so I thought I'd make some time to make a review video. This is about Series 4 of Babylon 5, which, my goodness, um, the it delivers on every level. It really does. Um, sadly, it is actually the be probably the best season of Babylon 5 out there. Probably not the best one to start watching because it has many storylines that were from earlier seasons resolved. So in this one, the Shadow War that started in the last season concludes. I'm not going to say how. Um, the Earth issue gets resolved and it's um, in this season becomes gritty also the country in which I live um, made it kept moving it around in the evening so they were showing it late in the evening sort of 11 o'clock GMT um, sorry 2300 GMT which to be honest is horrendous considering that it started off at 1800 GMT originally um, but that is why in the UK it did not do so well because they kept moving it around um, by this time they had moved it to a little segment that they called four later uh, which had Babylon 5 and there was one or two other things in that segment um, they tried to make it their uh, science fiction bit because I'm pretty sure um, they showed I can't even actually remember the name of the series of the show Dark, ah yes, Dark Skies I think they, they showed Dark Skies afterwards the big problem with Dark Skies is the premise was great but the execution of it not necessarily so much so um, almost like an invasion of the body snatchers but involving pop culture grey aliens which weren't exactly what they appeared to be um, this is probably the best way to put it but that's a tangent and we might do something about Dark Skies later but I don't even know where you can actually watch Dark Skies so I might investigate that at another point you know, I think it was trying to be a competitor against X-Files but X-Files was uh, hugely more successful than Dark Skies ever was but yes with the having the show on late night and keep moving it around as they did it hurt the show and sadly this this is a great this is a series at 100 percent the cast is great there is the departure of some of the cast because behind the scenes and this isn't a tangent but behind the scenes they didn't know whether they were going to get a fifth series so they had to very last minute change the last episode and then the last episode got moved to season five because he wanted a five year story arc which he managed to ascertain also at the same time it just it just shows how good writing can get a series done the, and the problem is though that I come to haunt season 5 but that's another video entirely so all the stuff that he wanted to get sorted out between 4 and 5 he had to push all into season 4 so the Shadow War is over within about uh, 6 to 7 episodes there is 1 or 2 episodes of calmness and then they start dealing with the Earth issue after um, the Interstellar News comes back and does a, a propaganda story against uh, the inhabitants of the station so all in all, they uh, start setting up a resistance and move all the stuff that they had from the Shadow War um, 
assets that they had in the Shadow War to the Earth issue. Uh, the biggest problem with the Earth one was they had to use, it was a civil war, so they had to use Earth stuff and the aliens just took a kind of side step. However, in in this series, you see Centauri Prime. You see the the the, the Mad Emperor is fantastic because he, he's so he's so unaware of it. He's, he's not aware. He has no self awareness. He well, he does have self awareness, but he doesn't have a, a clue as to what is actually going on, even in his own court, because. An effective emperor would certainly would. Um, I mean, he was a little bit paranoid, but nothing too major. Um, as I've explained before, the Lombo Jakar thing gets sort of worse because Jakar is led to Centauri Prime in chains and um, is pretty much tortured by the, the emperor. Uh, he even loses an eye. So, um, and loses a, a lot of blood. Um, it even gets a, a, a point which, for some reason, might be missing from this version. I'm not sure where, um, just to get a scream out of him, he gets slashed 50 times. Uh, but obviously, because it's sci fi, it's, it's not just a whip, it's an electro whip, which must be even worse than a normal whip <laughs> to be honest um, and it's stated that on 50 lashes you're dead more or less and on lash 48 or something like that he because he's proud he gives the cry out because he remembers that he's enduring this for his people to become free um, there's some very very adult themes in this series um, Especially the one where Sheridan gets captured and interrogated, beaten, assaulted, all that stuff. It's very, very uh, adult themes this season. It it gears up to more, well, a more adult audience. It's, I mean, th this this series is in this country got a fifteen certificate. Um, that basically ramps up. That uh, we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> so yes, um, a very, very good. Um, this was pretty much doing. They changed the provider of all this computer-generated images because unique. They never ever did location work because they simply didn't have the budget to do it. Star Trek had three to four times the budget per episode um, on any of their series whereas Babylon 5 could never do location work because they just I think it was a million pound budget per episode that sounds like a lot of money but back then with inflation adjusting for inflation and everything and that's that's paying the wages of all this, the actors that's paying the wages of the uh, for t principal photography, all the staff that involved—it's not a lot of money. It's 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 um it is not a lot of money at all. I mean, you can they they uh, filmed an episode in seven days, which is in, in, insane. Uh, the next season, because they found someone to back them, they it got reduced to six days per episode. Now, to be honest, with that amount of time, you'd expect the quality to slip, but the quality never did. It is, um, I mean, since the last video, they finally announced that they'll be bringing out the entirety of it on Blu-ray. Um, I am hoping that the remastered versions will be on the Blu-ray, because the DVDs are direct from VHS in our country, and sometimes that shows the um, the quality is not crystal clear sometimes so I would expect that the blu-ray and it's reasonably priced for what it is um, it's not clear whether they got everything else with it um, the 
the free TV movies and all that kind of stuff, but um, to see a crystal clear season well, 1 to 5 would be great because season 1 and 2 suffer terribly uh, from it. But th this, this is, they go all out in this just to finish everything. So most of the um, most of the stories are written by the creator of the series, J. Michael Staczynski. And I was, he hits the nail on the head every time. He he experienced things in real life which he puts into these, especially when somebody gets assaulted. Um, he, I remember a story that he wrote up about him being assaulted by a street gang. Um, and that transfers the um, choreographed, because they have to be choreographed, um, fight scenes uh, seem more tangible and more realistic because there's an event that, yes, the, the stunt people that <laughs> got the most battering, shall we say, um, did a did a bloody good job of it. Um, what, what more can I say? Really, it's um, it delivers on every level. It also establishes it as a serious contender against other other science fiction series. If it wasn't for this, there's a after this period of time, a lot more US television series. Um, started to maintain themselves um, in the science fiction role. Um, this this was probably a few years before, uh, well, a year or two before Stargate SG One, because I think that premiered in ninety seven or ninety eight, or um, if I remember rightly. I'm not really. I acknowledge Stargate, but it's not really. It's not really my thing. Some of the ideas in it aren't too bad because during the 90s I did watch other things because Star Trek is not the only thing uh, in the world. Um, at the same time, Star Wars was being remade. Well, see, episodes 1 to 3 were being remade and, <laughs> wow, um, what happened with those? But that's something else for another time. But yes, I've finally got round to it. I've, I've watched this um, a couple of weeks ago. I, I did. I don't generally binge things, but I did. I did binge this. Um, I wouldn't suggest binging it. I'd just say watching it in bits uh, because they just let everything sink in. Because there is a, a lot that happens in this season. As, as I've said before, we're getting closer and closer to being able to start editing my videos. I expect sometime in... It's, it's going to move back to October because first I've got to learn how to use the editing software and um, find the right machine for the job as well because obviously the current laptop doesn't have the power or the, sure, so the graphics power to use some of the software that you can buy so that will get better over time there will be some other things that we'll start doing in that i mean i will be able to do jump cuts i will be able to make better videos i do apologize for the quality of some of my videos as they could be so much better but i'm learning this thing video on video so uh, please forgive me if, uh, well, it is amateurish because that's all I have as an amateur when it comes to making videos. Before this, I would never, ever have filmed anything. I didn't have a camcorder when I was a kid because we weren't particularly well off. Um, did sort of dabble with um, my one of my friend's camcorders, but we didn't really seriously use it. We were going to, but it just it never transpired because that's just not the way we rolled um, as it were but um, I would also like to do some more location videos you can't really do location videos without decent editing so um, 
yes I, I would like to do that more and also the same thing as the uh, interview process um, I plan on doing one the first one um, in early September with a good friend of mine that uh, was used to sort of have crazy adventures uh, almost every weekend because at that time I was in shift work but it never worked any weekends anyway that wraps it up uh, I'll give it five stars out of five because it delivers on every level it is worth watching series one to three um, to get at least a context to some of the things that are going on the whole anti-alien sentiment is more realistic I, I think the problems with things like radio racism and xenophobia is that unfortunately the what make us human the thing the fear of something different than something you don't understand so I think it addresses it nicely because it, it said that we've transcended racism but xenophobia is still a very real thing anyway please like and subscribe this is 4046 hours